Hello, I'm back with my Dirkop Adler uh, semi-industrial, semi-professional sewing machine, which is a vintage machine, as you can see. Um, fabulous machine. It's about 60 odd years old. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to thread the machine. Uh, I've done a video which is the general showing you around the machine and what everything's for. Uh, there's a video showing you how to wind the bobbin on this machine. And uh, in this one, I'm going to show you how to thread the machine. Uh, so, I'm, it's a little Heath Robinson, my videoing. So bear with me, please. I'm going to turn the machine around and at the back you can see we have the spool holders. So I'm going to pop a spool on it. I have put this, this, uh, this is off another machine, don't know where I found it, to hold my spool to stop it whizzing round and spinning. It holds it in place and stops it being quite so whizzy. Um, I'll put that to one side for a moment. So I'm going to take it here. Now there is a, a like a hoop here. And it needs to be threaded through this. It isn't a, 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 a thing. We just go through this. Um, I don't think it's 100% necessary, but you can use a twin needle on this machine. So if you're using two threads, it's to keep your threads separate. But I always go through it, whether I've got one or more on it. So I'm going to go through the little hoop here. And then the first tension disc is at the top here. Let me move the machine back so you can see. So I'm going to do what you should do with all tension discs. I'm going to hold the spool and pull it down into it. Now, I'm using what I would call the left-hand tension discs because on this tension disc, it's very difficult to see, there are two. There's a left and a right hand. Again, we'll get to that when we double thread this. The next thing we need to do is open this up at the end. Now, I can see the light's not very good there. I'm hoping you'll be able to see what I'm doing here. Um, as I said, my video is a bit Heath Robinson, and until I get millions of you watching, come on, join your friends in. Um, I can't really afford anything else, so we'll be all right. You'll get sewing. So I'm going to take it down through the left tension disc here, and then there's another twin set of tension discs here. I'm wiggling. And I'm going to come through the left hand side tension disc up. I'm going to hold my bobbin and pull just to make sure it's engaging in the tension disc. Then we need to go into this little slot here and down. Then we have a little pigtail here. It needs to be clicked in to the pigtail. There we go. And then the same as all machines around the little clip where the needle is. So I'm going to go around the needle clip and uh, then I'm going to shut the door. I don't shut the door until I've done that bit because sometimes it can trap here. There's a little uh, sticky out bit of metal and I'm never quite sure which side the thread should go. I'm sure it should go one side or the other. but. Um, I don't have my instructions. I don't know what I've done with them. I've lost them, believe it or not. I might find them sometime. So I'm going to close that up. Here's your, uh, to set your tension disc here. Um, I'm happy somewhere between three and four normally, depending on what I'm doing. Um, it takes a standard 705 needle or a 15 by one. So the standard needles you use in all domestic sewing machines 15 by one, excuse me. So you can use stretch needles and you can use fine needles or whatever you want in it. Um, it's flat on the back, so it goes in. So we're going to thread front to back. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm an old person, bear with me. It may take a few tries. I have my best glasses on. Let's give it a go. Oh, I thought it might have done it first time for me, but no, I think that's it there. No, you'll just have to bear with me. I think we all know this, uh, the pain of threading the needle. Uh, it doesn't have a needle threader on it like the modern machines do. Um, 
and I always find those little wire needle threaders. Well, how do you use those? I mean, really, they just pull apart, don't they? Somebody needs to invent one that you can pay a few quid for. That'll last for more than one needle threading. Oh, well, there we're there. No, we're not. Bear with me. It's as painful for you as it is for me, I'm sure. Right. I think I'm there. Yes, we are. Just wait till we do the twin needles. We'll be here all day. Okay, threaded the needle and as always, thread down and under the foot towards the back, like you would any machine. Um, you noticed I put my foot up there because it was down. So then I'm going to take my bobbin. It's uh, very similar to just a, a standard single bobbin or the bobbins on most oscillating bobbin machines. There you go. Has the clip here. Um, it doesn't have a finger as such. I find it really tricky to get in, I'm honest with you. Uh, and I have little fat fingers, but they're small at the side of some people's. So you just have to have a way of doing it. So the bobbin goes in as all bobbins. You want it, uh, the thread, when you put the bobbin in, you want to be able to pull the thread back on itself into the tension. So this is pulling clockwise and I've then gone backwards. And then you pull it around the tension clip here. And if all's well and good, your bobbin should hold. Now, I think it should drop if you bounce it, but they drop out. I'm sorry. You just have to get used to knowing. But if you've got a bit of tension on it, it's okay. If it pulls out too freely, it's not. But just a bit of tension's okay. This might be a bit loose, but it sews okay. So I'm going to pull the little uh, clippy bit out. And here is where it's tiny fingers. So when I have the extension table on, which I have for this and I use all the time, it's really tricky, so I'm showing you how to do this without the extension table on. And I can see you can't see it, so just let me find something to wedge my machine up with just for a moment. Hopefully. Can you see that now? I think you can. So this little door opens. Mine's twisted. There we go. Can we see in there? Let me just try and pull this. There we go. Um... So you obviously have to get the hole in the middle onto the pin in here. You turn your wheel away from you and make sure your needle is at the highest point it can be before you put the bobbin in. So in order to do that, you turn it away from you and the needle at the highest point, just as it goes over the highest point. So I have this, I can also see there's a little bit of thread in there as I've just done that. Just let me pull the thread out. It has a tendency to catch mine. There's just a little bit that it doesn't catch on. Yeah, the things you get to know about your old machines. So I have the thread hanging over that way and I'm going to put it in where I think it goes. And I use my other thumb to steady it because... It doesn't go in very easily without that finger that um, the, the modern machines have on them. That really does help to get them in. But that's in. You let the clip go and it's in. So I'm going to hold my thread. Again, I'm going to take my thread to the back. Hoping you can see this. I'm not going to block this. I'm going to hold my thread back. Well, I'll hold it from this side. There we go. I'm going to turn the needle away from me. And you'll see the needle go down. Hopefully engage, the loop goes round and pulls the thread up to the top. Get my scissors and I pull the bottom thread through, like that. Both of those threads through the foot to the back, shut my little window, put my machine back down. There we go. So, um, it's now threaded, ready to sew. This will be fun, won't it? Um, sewing with the machine. Where are we? We're on 10 minutes. Okay, we can do a little demonstration if I find a bit of fabric. Um, some wasn't going to sew these on here, but I've got a pile of them, so may as well just get the other bit for that. Okay, have I got these right? No. Pairs help, don't they? Just bear with me while I find a pair of boots. That I can sew with. There we are, that's a pair. 
I've done them on the uh, overlock for that bit. So, um, these bits of gadgets here, I'm sure you're wondering what they are. If you haven't watched the other one, I gave you an in-depth on this. Um, these are the cams to do the decorative stitches here. You engage the cams with this little lever here. So if I want to do a zigzag, which I've got a zigzag cam on here, I engage this lever and turn this one, it's from naught to four, and that's in millimetres. So naught is for a straight stitch and disengage the cams. I just want a straight stitch now. This lever does my um, needle position, right, middle, left. I want it in the middle, I just want a standard stitch. Here is the stitch length lever. Here it has reverse on this side and stitching on here. It's a German machine, it says V for stitching. Not quite sure why, somebody will know, but I don't. So I'm going to set it at about three. You have to decide on this machine when you're using it, which side you want to use. Because if you're going to use the same stitch length every time, it's very wide. Or you could use the center, I don't, I just use the side. It's each to their own. So I'm gonna pop this on and hopefully it's going to sew nicely, seeing as I'm not in the right sewing position for you. So I put my uh, fabric under. I'm going to use the edge of the foot as a guide as I can't see what I'm doing. Um, I have my two threads at the back, which I'm gonna hold here just to get going. When I find my foot, I'm going to press my foot down and hopefully we'll sew. Whoa, here we go. Now it is a very old machine and sometimes it just needs a little helping hand. There we go. To get going. Right. It is, as you can see, I'm not doing very well with this, but it'll show you. But it is a lovely machine to sew with, I do have to say. Before taking it out, because I'm going to whiz it along a little bit of uh, kitchen paper just to show you that it is quite speedy. So to take it out, you have to make sure that your uh, needle is in the upright position and just gone over the apex there. Lift the foot up, pull it to the back or the side. Mine's pulling out lovely. Sometimes it catches. Today it's not. And I'm going to cut that off. I've got a little bit of kitchen roll here and I'm just going to whiz it at full speed for you so you can see even though this machine is 60 plus years old it's fast okay there we go I think that's a lovely machine if you ask me so that is just a single stitch and it's threaded as you can see this is not pulling gen now it has a pull on it so I'm just going to turn the the wheel and I feel that thread disconnect, it catches underneath, but I forgive it because it's 60 years old. And I'm going to just chop that off. So that is how to thread up and use a single needle on the Dirkop 1031. Lovely machine. I don't use modern machines, by the way. I do have an overlocker my other half bought me uh, for, for this Christmas. Um, and that's great because I do a lot of sewing for my uh, grandson and twin great nephews and they all want t-shirts and stretchy fabrics. Although I have done them all on this, but that is a different beast. I do all 95% of my sewing on vintage machines. Um, this one and you will see my other videos I have hand crank straight stitch vintage machines also I love them I have a posh machine I don't like it so that is the Dirkop 1031 I uh, hope you've enjoyed my video there will be another one showing you the twin needle but time wise we're nearly on 15 minutes it's more than enough for anyone to take in see you soon bye